Yeah, that's probably minus seven, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> I just, we got some snow. <laughs> this is really our second decent snowfall of the whole winter. The winter is almost over with. Probably 10 inches, eight, 10 inches. But uh, uh, my truck there, I changed the wheel bearing on the passenger side front wheel bearing there last week and it was like the next day this side the uh, uh, brake pads worn out must have seized or stuck in there it's metal on metal but the side that i took off i cleaned the brake pads up and everything and the router was in really nice shape like this one this one looks in good shape i just took it off oh, oh. <coughs> frozen to the thing already probably because it was hot oh I can't even budge it but the other side's worn right off oh I can't believe that froze on there so fast Northern Michigan, like I just drove all the way up there. You know, I didn't have time to change it, so I just drove it like that, metal on metal. <laughs> Can't get any worse because that's what I always tell everybody. Well, it's metal on metal. Nobody uh, turns down the rotors anymore. You know, just do it for as long as you have to, and, and then you just change the whole things, the pads and everything. So it's mostly highway driving, not really using the brakes. Anyways, back to the FXR. I got the uh, fork seals in. And it comes with, uh, actually comes with new screws in there too, I see. New lock ring. I got some Lucas oil. That came in. Um, also, uh, this is the original drain plug. And I believe there would have been a copper washer on there. Or plastic one or something. And I was just going to order that washer. And then uh, the threads are half inch by 20. Uh, 20 threads per inch so I just uh, put in the search engine on on uh, eBay uh, 20 threads per inch half inch uh, oil drain bolt with a magnet on because I wanted a magnet I think this was like 698 with a magnet on there so that's gonna go in there yeah, I'll put that in there that's a little better and it's got a nice seal on it too I really like these rubber seals you can buy them so i got that i got this i'm just gonna pull the i'm not gonna i'm just gonna i got i'm too busy right now i got too much on the go so i'm just gonna get these drained and leave it sit for a couple days and uh the oil capacity some people are putting 15 weight in some people are putting 20 weight in and the capacity is five ounces if it's a wet, like a quick oil change. Six ounces if you six ounces if you let it you know sit for a week or so and let it drain out. There's my other router and pack. This kit came out. This kit was great. Came with all the different um, um, sliders, sets of pads, two routers. It's like 80 bucks or something like that, $84. And they're drilled and slotted. Can't beat that. I was cleaning up the, the sliders, you know, putting them on the wire wheel. And uh, wire brush and cleaning them all up and everything. And then I opened up the box and here's a brand new pack of sliders in there. So can't beat that. I don't know if that'll even drain without the, without the, uh, these are on sale too, half price, right, regularly 12 bucks for six bucks, TSC, okay, where did I put the other screw, I'm getting to be a real mess around here, there it is there, yeah, it's starting to drip out a little bit, I'm not going to be able to get at this probably till next week, I'm missing one of these things, and they're like 20 bucks, Look, this, I mean, Harleys aren't made in the States anymore. All the parts are made somewhere else. 
Forks are made in Japan, wiring's made in Japan or China or somewhere. The engine's actually a German engine design. But they assembled it all, put it together in Milwaukee. Um, yeah, we'll let those drip dry. Okay, that's all I can do for right now. I just had the screws out of the forks there for the last day. No oil was coming out. Kind of figured it wouldn't without the uh, uh, top of the fork. I don't know if you can see. Top of the fork nuts up here off. Once I took that off, the, the, the oil all leaked out. It's, it's really black oil. Let me get a towel on here. But <laughs> what I should have done is um, before taking those fork caps off, uh, I should have loosened the, uh, uh, the damper bolt inside here. But uh, my little electric impact one gun got this one off, so I, I'll try it on this one. Probably my pneumatic one would do it. Parts flying everywhere. What the hell is this? Oh my god. Just sit on top of the fork. <laughs> There's the space where it sits on top of the fork. Looks like somebody made that. I've never seen that before. Little piece of uh, um, PVC piping, about two inches. Looks like somebody put that on top of the forks for more uh, pressure. I'm looking in the book, but I've never seen that before. <laughs> oh my God. It gets deeper and deeper. Come on, where's my ratchet? Let me find my ratchet. Brake spacers keep falling out. Put that there. Put this one here. Screw to that one. Normally, I'd take these forks right off and clamp it in a vise and pull it apart, but I think I can just do it like this. There's a bushing in here. Well, first of all, I gotta take the clip out. Let's get on the right side of this. Let's get on the right side of the tire. Get my 
glasses. There's a little spring clip in this one. Some of them are sir clips. I think my kit comes with both. Yeah, this comes with a sir clip. I can reuse this. This clip here. It's pretty rusty. Sometimes these things get so rusty they just come apart in pieces out of there because the water always sits in there if you don't have a good rubber boot on it. So put that part there. And it's usually a washer underneath that. I don't see a washer. Usually there's a washer like that that comes on top of it, but maybe this one doesn't have one. So there's a, a bronze bushing in here normally. And uh, it's a bit of a press fit in there. I mean, that can't be stock. That's just a piece of ABS pipe. I gotta look that up. Somebody's put that on top of the spring like that. I just can't believe that's the way it goes. There's the spring in there. So I'm just gonna hammer this down and it should slide uh, out past the bushing. It should pull the, uh, the seal out with it. Get any gloves on. Just to bang into there. Seals out. There's the seal. There's the steel washer. There's the bronze bushing. Now if you grab your fork leg at this point if you grab this fork leg and you can feel I got some play in there. I got play in there. That means I need new bushings. When you got all the spring tension and everything on it, it's, uh, it's hard to feel for that. But now when you get it apart, I got play in there. Especially when it's at the bottom. Actually, it sits, it sits about right there, but there's still play. So I'll get some bushings. <clears throat> I got the center control brake pedal back on and got the, uh, the uh, push rod there back in. The adjuster, it's just kind of a rough adjustment because I got to put the, uh, uh, the, the two and one header pipes in, so I may have to raise everything up or lower it down a little, little bit. This bolt was missing because it had forward control, so I just kind of made this bolt here with a carriage bolt because it's got a big round head here, so the so that stops the pedal from flying way the hell up here. And uh, I still got to flush the rear and the rear brakes up, but they work really good, so I'm just going to give them a good flush. Still got to change the rear tire. Um, took off the old muffler brackets for the original ones. Um, yeah, I bent this, I just bent this forward a little bit. Um, you can't even tell really, it's on, you can see it's on a little bit of an angle. It's the least intrusive, I didn't want to start grinding out the frame to push this back. And uh, if someday I find a stock um, brake arm, I'll just unbolt it and put it in and just tap that back up straight again. <coughs> right there, bent a little bit. I got the header pipes and uh, there's the two-in-one muffler. It's got a bit of an upswept to it. Just I'm waiting for um, the new collars um, because the, the uh, I'm missing one. It's here somewhere, but I just can't find it. But the, the, uh, the little lock rings are rotted right out, so I, you can order a whole kit for 20 bucks. 
I got the fork seals all in. I got the, uh, well, I put the resistor in the BMW. Didn't fix it, but that's the cheapest way to go first, 15 bucks. And then uh, uh, it was the blower motor. I hooked the blower motor to the battery and, and uh, it doesn't work at all. Uh, what was I looking for? I had some parts over here somewhere. Um, I just had them this morning. So, right here. This is the wheel bearing. Wheel bearings and seals. So I'm going to do that all in one shot. So I'm just going to leave everything the way it is until these bushings should come in in a couple of days there. Uh, no point in cleaning uh, uh, the bearings and everything. I'll have them sitting around for four or five days getting dust on. So I just do it all in one shot. And uh, I'll have to slide the forks out so that I can pound uh, the seals back in. But yeah, these bushings, they're, they're worn out. They're, they're pretty bad. There goes a washer. Oh yeah, that was the other thing. Uh, need that washer. Oh. My in my last video there, I was wondering what the hell were these uh, PVC pieces of pipe doing in there? And I was watching another guy's video, upgrading his forks, putting the heavy duty uh, springs in it. And this is part of the kit. They give you like a four or five inch piece. You cut it in half. This should be about two inches. Put it on top with that washer. So I got that one. Yeah, and there's the other one right there. So it's, it's an upgrade kit for this front end. So this bike's had that put into it too. Somebody's put some money into this bike with the cam and the carb and push rods, and fork upgrades. And so somebody's done a little bit of work to this bike. So that's good. I'll put that all back together the way it was. And hopefully I can make my fork brace uh, work. I'm hoping, otherwise I'll, have to, I'll just have to get the one that clamps around uh, the outside of the fork tube in here. They're, they're the best ones, but 200 bucks. As to 43 bucks. Um, yeah, that's it for now. I'm, uh, I've been tinkering around with this thing for probably an hour, getting it all lined up and adjusted, and uh, find, finding some bolts for that, and then trying to fit the the pipe the pipe on or just hanging on a loose to see if it's going to rub or touch. It's, it doesn't. It just goes right under here. I just got to make a little bracket off of this to hold that. Uh, um, exhaust system on what's it called fire uh what the hell's it called oh my god every time i go to show it i can't remember the name of it oh I, I think i got it here somewhere fire firebrand they're called firebrand two into one headers this is called the 50 52 52 model um I can't remember if that's the angle of it or something like that, 52 degrees and 52 degrees, or there's a reason for that. Anyways, that's it for now until I get the, uh, um, what am I waiting for here? My brain's just shot. Yeah, these, these bushings. They'll be in a couple days, and I'll finish this video up. I'm just doing a little wiring today. On these, these signal lights here. Soldered that one. The signal lights were mounted back here somehow, and uh, I put them where they're supposed to be. I forgot why they had them back there for some reason, probably, but they weren't wired in properly, so I got them all soldered in. Just leaving the wires hanging down for now. When I get the rear tire off to change it, after I do the front tire, I, I the, uh, the the wires slide into uh, clips inside the fender, so I can pull the the uh, free play out down here and uh, and get that out of there. So right now I'm just gonna solder the ignition wires back together and uh, and I'm just cleaning out the uh, the um, battery box here, this old just scraping it out. Cushion padding out of the battery. So I'll clean this up. 
put some paint in there. And uh, I got new rubber, some different kinds of rubber I can put in here. Anyways, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna get that wiring all wrapped up. I think I'm gonna sandblast this here, the ignition coil bracket, and uh, paint that. It's a little rusty. Clean that up a little bit, then I can get that all bolted together. And uh, <laughs> I wish I could put this horn somewhere else. I'm pretty sure this horn originally was under here somewhere. Like I'm, I've been trying to look, I've never seen one mounted on the frame like this. Like that's got to be aftermarket, I'm thinking. I, I got so much crap in this garage, I can't even move, so I got to get this cleaned up too. Yeah, I thought I, well, there's no way that's going to fit in there anywhere with the header pipe coming out. Underneath, I don't know where that horn belongs I don't know if somebody's got an FXR 1985 let, let me let me know if that horn belongs there some of them were on the ignition switch right down here like right in the center like by the coil you know maybe that's maybe that's where it was maybe on this bracket here I don't know trying to find a picture okay I'm gonna keep working on this wiring I had some of this stuff here it's packing foam but it's it's a little bit thicker thicker stuff and uh, I do have some rubber matting that's gonna fit down in there but this packing foam is a little bit more cushiony so it won't vibrate as much I think I'm gonna try it it's, I can peel it out and change it if I don't it doesn't work or it rots out right away. But uh, get a better view of that there. I think that'll work. And I just sprayed a little bit of um, this uh, Elmer's adhesive on both sides. Oh, of all creatures. got so many <laughs> there's so many sprays these days they got sprays for everything what they have in 1900 nothing you're on you're on I'm just taking out these uh, forks out of this FXR and uh, they're seized in here there's uh, I get soaked and penetrating while I got the two bolts pinch bolts loosened off in here uh, but it was, I think it sees at the top up here. And uh, so I'll show you what I had to do to get them out. There's no pinch bolt at the top. I believe it's just a wedge fit up there. That's what's holding it up. But uh, so I, I pushed the uh, damper out of this one. So much stuff in here. I just had it. I just had it. Anyways, I pushed the damper up to pull the spring out, and uh, where'd, that, where'd the damper go? So I pulled the spring out the top, and these are this is an aftermarket uh, progressive um, shock spring, fork spring, and you can see the windings are tighter at the bottom. Um, I was always taught on anything, uh, valves, valve springs. Uh, the rear shocks, front shocks, you put the tighter windings at the bottom. Um, uh, just to, here's the one reason when I was taught. Let's say I put it up this way. I've got almost double the mass at the top now. It's more weight at the top, so it's actually compressing the shocks a little bit more. You can feel the difference in weight, you know, on that, that one side there. Um, so this one I pulled out properly. It was up, it was up like this. The, the finer windings were at the bottom. That's the way I was always taught to do it. This this fork here, I'm just ready to try to bang the top out, and it's pushing it up. 
set up. And I pulled this one out the opposite way. The uh, finer windings are at the at the top. Like, I don't know why anybody would put one in one way, not the other. They probably didn't even notice. They probably didn't even look. Didn't even notice that one end's wound a lot tighter than the other. But that's just one thing. So this thing seized in there pretty good. I don't know if it's ever been apart. And uh, I'll kind of show you how I got it out. I'll, I'll undo this, uh, this fork here first. Take the first. Oh, this side's got a circlip in it. <laughs> this side had the, uh, the little wire and the other side's got the circlip. It makes me think more and more that I've got to take apart. I, I got to check everything on this whole bike. Like it's unbelievable. And this side's really rusty. Oh well, find my circle of pliers. Okay, I'm ready to bang this one off. Oh! I had this one soaking with penetrating oil, so that came off a lot easier. Oh, there it is there. Probably still up inside here. I gotta put the nut back in it. Find it with all my junk here. Here it is. Step ladder. Block of wood, my hand. They look nice and parallel. Not tweaked. The other one I had to beat on it quite a bit. I got it soaking and penetrating oil too. Oh, that's the bolt here, pinch bolt. There she goes. Man, you gotta hit those things hard to get them out. Here. I don't know if that screw pinches the forks or location for something else. Windscreen. See all the rust in here where that thing was. Phone rang. Sure enough. What's going on here? I had that tipping up higher before. Anyways. These ones have a tapered fit in the top there, so need a couple of good bangs to get that loose. It's a little bit pitted up in here too, but that's not too important. This is where the seal rides. This is the most important part here. Okay. Just waiting for the bushings. I can't put this together without the bushings. You can see how it's all gray here where it's worn on that side. I think my dog's barking. I better go let him out. Nobody's home. Okay. Let's do I got a lot of the parts in. 
I got everything I need to do to finish these forks. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about the triple tree now. A couple more bolts, I can have that apart, repack it, check it out. I, I, I will check, I'll take these straps off and check it before I put the forks back in. Uh, let me, I'm just gonna get some of these things put together here. I got, I got too, much, too many things apart. I just popped the two um, um, bushings here, the brass or bronze bushings off of there, and they're, they're really sloppy just kind of almost fell off. Well, this one did fall off once I did the other one. And here's the new ones here. And they're quite a bit thicker, like the thickness of it you can compare to the old ones. So it needed to be rebuilt. Not too often you gotta replace these. Um, it's gotta be a fair amount of miles on it. Wear them out. But uh, right now, I'm just gonna finish up a little bit of the wiring here. I, uh, like it's an aftermarket ignition system. Uh, it's an ultra ignition system. It's an older one, probably from the late 80s, early 90s, or 90s. And they had the wire going all the way from the pickup, all the way down that side of the bike, the far side, up through the battery box, and then back all the way back through here. Well, I just ran it up under the starter motor and straight up here. I took out like over two feet of uh, wire. It, it didn't need to be that far. I just uh, strapped it right in here. So I cut the ends off and I'm just gonna solder on. Uh, I had to go get some uh, uh, new connectors. And these were on sale at Harbor Freight. This whole box of miscellaneous ones here. I think they're around six bucks, five ninety nine something like that. It wasn't very much. And I painted this bracket. I painted the coil bracket. Got that on there. But um, I, I think this bracket's got to be grounded. And uh, so I'm going to bear a spot on either side here a little bit. My phone rang. Anyways, I got this bolted down. I'm just about to put in the, uh, this uh, engine stabilizer link here at the top of the engine, but I noticed the knuckle is, doesn't move at all, it's seized solid, so I'm going to get some penetrating oil in there, see if I can free that up. Stick a punch or something in there, screwdriver. The inside one seems to move. But I'm gonna put some penetrating oil in there too. At least it moves. something shorter to go that way. This nut's a little rusty in that. I'm going to go clean it up. Okay, just put all new connections on there. I sanded down the bottom of this plate a little bit so I got a ground there. Don't know if it matters. Don't think it does. Feeding these wires in here, like that. Top feature like that.
granddaughter just called and her kids are all sick. The flu or something. She's all worried about this flu, corona flu. I'm not too worried about it. I think the media is blowing it out of proportion. Honestly believe that. Okay, so that's going to go like that. I think I'm going to put the battery in and uh, make sure everything works. Got the battery in. I don't see anywhere where clamps or anything goes. Unless something goes through this hole here. Next time I see one of these bikes, man, I'm going to have a get my camera going here and uh, have a look at all the places where I don't know where things go. I don't think we're putting the rubber mat across there. Should be something over top of these. But uh, I got the key on. And uh, horn works. Lights work. High beam, low beam. I want to crank it over, but it's in fourth gear right now, and I can't turn the wheel. Because uh, I want to check to see if I got spark before I torque the uh, spark plug. The spark plug's in the hole there. So I'm just going to leave them in loose, get the front end back together. No way nothing can touch that. Uh, still like to put a piece of foam over it though. Um, yeah, so I think I'm on the front end now. Oh, I didn't see if the, yeah, the tail light works. Let me see if the brake light works. over there. <clears throat> I was playing hockey this morning and uh, the guy on the ice before us there in the same league crashed head first into the boards, twisted his neck but he broke his wrist, he broke a bone just above his wrist. And one of my best friends uh, last Thursday, I think it was Wednesday night, Wednesday night or Thursday night, uh, was playing in Port here in Michigan and I uh, got tripped up and went head first into the boards and broke his neck, C1. So they're gonna operate on, he, he's got all the feeling in his joints and everything, didn't lose anything there. So they're gonna fuse his neck there, joints C1 and C2 with two rods. So I think he'll have a stiff neck for a while. Randy, I think it's time to pack it up. Don't want to see you get hurt anymore. Okay, I'm going to start on the front end. I should almost do a whole separate video just on the forks and triple tree and all that, but I just, I'm just putting together one big video. Somebody's going to have to, uh, kind of like the Norton, kind of have to watch all the videos. Find everything. Still looks like there's sludge. I don't think the camera can pick it up, but I don't know. Maybe you can see in there. Looks like there's sludge in the back corner, so I gotta uh, try to get that out.
Try not to step on brake cleaner on the floor. Your shoes will stick to it. <laughs> It'll melt the rubber on your shoes. That's why I throw all these rags down there. These are my shoes. The other part I need. Okay. Phone ring. Here's the other bushing, just falls right off. Okay. Let's put this together. I guess I need the new kit. I can see it's even got the screws. for the caps too okay bushings where's the new bushings There, right there. There's the cap. Put the cap on. Slide this into here. I'm going to reuse the old uh, bolts here. Let's get a copper wash on it. If you, if you don't have an impact, you, you may have to put the spring and everything in, but I'm going to just get it all started this way. Hopefully it'll catch. Put the thick end down. What I like to do is put a little bit of a lubricant on here, just so that seal slides down nice. And uh, just a light oil, or a, uh, I should have had this already here. Doing things half-assed. Just a, either like a light grease, like white grease, or even WD-40 would work. You can wipe it off after. You can always wipe that off. Put 
the washer in. I'm gonna just I'm gonna use the original stock washer. It's a stamped washer, so it's got a rounded edge on one side. The rounded edge goes in first. You want that uh, seal on top there. That's the way I would do it. And then the seal. Come on there. Oh. Seal's got two lips, but this uh, the big lip goes down. And I, what I do is I try to turn it, just kind of twist it all the way down. That way you're not going to damage that seal. It's getting lubricated. You can even pull it up a bit now and wipe off some of that excess oil. There. What I got, where did I, where did I put it? Uh, I just got a piece of inch and a half ABS pipe. Fits pretty good. I should cut it shorter because I can't even swing it from here. Tall enough I can tap it with a hammer, tap it in there. Okay, you gotta get it. You got to get it seated down in there below where the circlip can go in. I think I'm there. Yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> Find my circlip tool, which I'm missing. Got a cheap one somewhere. That's the one. Sharp edge up. So it catches the lip good. See the snap-on dealer guy and get some new tools. Cause this is a joke. This one. Just give this a little tap in there.
just make sure that's locked all the way in there. That comes out when you're driving and you hit a pothole. Front end can fall off. Put the dust seal back on. Put the spring back in. Here's all the fork oil capacities. Mine's uh, like the FXRS, I believe. Actually, in Canada, it's called an FXS. And I can't find a listing for that anywhere, but it's going to be between six and a half, or six and a quarter wet, seven dry. That's what I'm going to put in there. I'm going to put seven in, or close to it. The kit did come with um, a new copper washer for that bottom bolt, changed that, and uh, a new copper washer and screw for the lower fork leg, and a new O-ring as well too, which I just changed. Um, on this bike, I'm missing this reflector here. Uh, the front ones are orange and the rear ones are red. And in Canada, you have to have that reflector on for a safety. So I ordered one. You can only buy them two at a time. So two for 20, with shipping, taxes, and everything, I'm getting two of them for 25 bucks. So I'm going to put one back on eBay right away for like 13 bucks. And then same with the rear. I didn't notice until the other day there, but I'm missing one. I got a red one here, and, and this one's missing. So uh, I got two of them ordered, so it's 50 bucks. That's crazy. So I'll be selling one of them too. They come in packs of two. And I notice a lot of people online are, what the f Somebody lose a leg here? Somebody needs one, I'm going to be putting those two online. And, uh, won't cost very much to ship it, a couple bucks. So I'm just scraping all the glue off here, getting this ready. Easier to do it here than the, on the bike, probably. I'm really thinking about pulling that triple tree off. Packing those bearings and checking them out. Okay, there's one done. for now. check this on the bench but uh oh, look at that fucking thing well i got i got play up here because i don't have a clamp type but down here there's no play at all no play in that fork at all where there was quite a bit of play in there before okay let me just leave that there for now and i'll do this one and uh i'm not going to pour the fork oil in yet I'm kind of debating whether to pull that triple tree off. I just gotta 
disconnect the handlebars. And uh, take it apart. I'll, ta I'll take this, the straps off and I can kind of feel, if there's any notches at all, I'm doing it right away. So those two things I'm checking for here. If there's free play in that uh, uh, fork clamps, then the bearing's been too loose and they're gonna be damaged. And then the other thing is you, you, you wanna turn the, from all the way left to all the way right really slowly and just feel for any little notches or, or grabs. You'll feel it. If there's a notch in there anywhere, it's, it's junk. Because you, you could be leaning into a corner, you know, going 70 miles an hour and gets caught in one of those little notches and you can't control your bike properly. That way, but. To, to me, they're they're a little uh, whoever tighten those bearings up. It's they're too tight. I, I would say because like you can stop it right there. Like it, it's stiff. Like it's actually stiff right there. That thing should just flop right over. So that's not a good sign. I know it's, I don't, I just know I gotta pull it apart. I just know I should, you know, just lazy. Might be a little notch, just a, it's tight right here. Yeah. It, it kind of gets tight and then it goes loose and tight. Right there. Usually you feel the notches at uh, 10, 10 to 12 and 12, 10, like about right about there and right about here. I'm going to pull them off. I, I might even just replace them. They're, they're cheap. They're only about uh, on eBay. I know you can get them for thirty bucks, but I think you can even get them on there for like twenty five, twenty two bucks. Tapered roller bearing. Yeah. May as well do it. Then I know that front end's done. Wheel bearings will be done. Forks, fork seals, bushings, bearings. Do that triple tree. Doesn't it's it shouldn't be tight at the end like that. Like it like look at it's tight. Like it's not turning. And then it gets loose a little bit and then tight. It's been over tightened. I'm taking it off. Next video. That'll be next video.